this morning and wave the hand. God, we love you this morning, God. God, we give you the praise this morning, God. God, we give you the honor this morning, God. Listen, for about 30 seconds, I just want you to begin to think about the goodness of Jesus. I want you just to begin to think about how he blessed you time and time again. How he made a way out of no way. How he delivered you and brought you out. Listen, we get ready to go back to that hallelujah part. And when we go back there, I want you to scream to the top of your lungs, hallelujah. Because listen, when you scream hallelujah, I want you to think about how he brought you out in January. How he made a way out of no way in February. How he healed your body in June. I want you to think about how he blessed you during the Hurricane Harvey. So when we go back to this hallelujah part, I need to hear every person in this building. I need to hear your voice this morning. I need to hear your voice this morning because God has done so many wonderful things for you. God has blessed you in so many ways. Come on, we get ready to go. Come on. God, 
Lord is so faithful. Come on, give him a hand praise as you have your seats. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God is so faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. And all that he does for us. Yeah. Amen. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you look good this morning. Come on, look at somebody else. Say, neighbor, you look good this morning. It's so good to be in the house of some good looking people. Amen. Amen. Come on, give yourselves a hand clap. Amen. Amen. Pastor Scott, why do we look so good this morning? Because we're smiling. Amen. Amen. And we're smiling because we know that God has it all in control. Amen. No matter what we're going through, no matter what we're dealing with, God has it in control. Amen. 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 And we give him the honor and we give him the praise and the glory because he's worthy to be praised. Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but I'm excited because Jesus is the reason for the season. Okay, y'all missed that right there. Yeah. Pastor Tammy said last week that he has a gift with my name on it. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about my gift this morning. Amen? Yeah. He bought me the gift of salvation. Yeah. And because of that, I give him all the praise this morning. Amen? Yeah. Amen. God is so good, and we are excited just once again to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Amen. We have some special guests in here this morning, and so we just want to bless the Lord and give God all the glory and all the praise. Because how many know God can move the mountain into the sea? Amen? Yeah. And we have but the faith the size of the mustard seed. Yeah. And I don't know about y'all, but I got some watermelon size faith. Yeah. Okay, some of y'all still got mustard seed faith, but I got some cantaloupe kind of faith. Amen? Because yeah. I'm expecting God to do some great things in 2018. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Without any further ado, come on, put your hands together for Pastor Timmy this morning. Amen? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We thank God for an awesome, awesome uh, time in Him this morning as we worship with Him. Amen. I'm just so grateful because when you sit back and you kind of think about that we're at the end of our year, basically, we have this last week coming, and you think about all, right. all of the things that we experience, not just as a people, but as Houstonians. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God has really brought us through. Yeah. And um, as I sat there, I just kind of thought about what I've been going through the last year and a half, yeah. two years, and I'm thinking, Say. God, you yeah. deserve yeah. all of the honor. Yeah. God, you deserve all the glory. Yeah. God, you deserve every thank you, every hallelujah, yeah. every praise, Jesus. Yeah. Because some of the stuff that we have gone through, uh -huh. the end, within our life alone, yeah. it is such, it, it is, I can't even think, I can't even yeah. fathom in words how he's allowed me to still be here. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Without further ado, let's go straight to the word. Um, would you stand with me for a moment? Amen. And I'm a quickly this morning. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's go to John 10 and 10. Last week we talked about uh, the gift, that the Lord has a gift with our name on it. We talked about because it's the Christmas holiday that people are expecting gifts. Amen. Amen. And so we talked about how um, Isaiah 6 talked about how for unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and we talked about how his he was this gift given unto us so that we would have life. Amen. Amen. And so what I'm going to do today is stay in that same vein. I'm just going to use a different scripture, and we're going to talk about the same thing. Amen. 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 The gift of life. Hallelujah. John 10 and 10 is what we're going to talk about. I do honor the Lord this morning. Bless him for the privilege again to stand before you and to declare the word of God and being called as an anointed woman of God. Amen. I do want to thank you for the pastor who, who is here, Pastor Joshua Scott, for the opportunity as well. Well, and for you, the people of God who will listen unto my voice. Amen. Amen. And we send blessings to First Lady Veronique as well. Amen. The gift of life, John 10 and 10, one scripture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. You may have your seat. I know that that may not sound like a Christmas scripture, but let's just roll with it. Amen. 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 Keep praying with me. Amen. Got my flats on again today. Amen. Uh, pray, for me. pray for my back. At least now we know what's wrong with it. I need y'all to pray that my body shifts itself back into its right position. Amen. 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 So that's why I'm having back problems, but amen. amen. So written in the Washington Post, back in May of 2014 there was an article that I found and I began to read titled Chinese couples rush to get pregnant before the
the dreaded year of the sheep. Oh. In the form of Chinese astrology, the birth symbol is a 12-year rotation of animals that start with the rat. Okay. And it's followed by the ox, the tiger, the rabbit, the dragon, the snake, I was born in the year of the dragon, horse, sheep, the monkey, the rooster, the dog, and then it ends with the pig. Mm -hmm. According to the Chinese the calendar at that time, the year of the sheep was coming the following February. Mm -hmm. And so there's a saying that says, some people are just born lucky. Right. But the parents in China would rather not live, leave their kids' fate up to luck. All right. they rather not chance it. Mm -hmm. They did not want a baby born in the dreaded year of the sheep. Okay. Chinese parents associate sheep with the implied meaning as being weak, okay. being obedient, and being foolish. Uh -huh. You see, they believe that sheep were meat creatures raised for nothing more than the slaughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. According to some super superstitions, babies born in the year of the sheep therefore will grow up to be followers mm -hmm. and not leaders. Okay. The children, they say, are destined for heartbreak and fail marriages. And they will be unlucky in any business opportunities. Yeah. One particular folk, folk tale says that only one out of ten babies born in the year of the sheep would find happiness. Okay. So now I must admit, I'm not an expert on sheep. Mm -hmm. However, after doing just a little bit of research and reading, I have found that sheep don't tend to be survivors. They are not strong, they're pathetic, entirely dependent upon the shepherd because they are dumb, directionless, and defenseless. Yeah. So when God says in John chapter 10 that we are sheep who need to be to who needs a shepherd, he doesn't say it necessarily to demean us. Right. Yeah. It is just a very realistic assessment. Sometimes you just have to be real with yourself. Right. You ain't no good. You got a bad attitude. This is wrong, Tammy. Be real with yourself. Yeah. Assess yourself so you can know what you need. All right. So we are sheep, he says, yeah. who are completely dependent upon the shepherd. Right. And which he calls himself the shepherd. Yeah. yeah. So to say that God is our shepherd and we are sheep is to humble ourselves under him. Yes. Yeah. It is to admit that what is true about us. See, sometimes it's hard to just be honest with yourself mm -hmm. when somebody say you got a bad attitude. Yeah. You need to just take it and run on with it because I think you really do. Mm -hmm. Hello. Right. I don't know. We elevate God when we say that he's our shepherd, yes. declaring what is true of him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we say the Lord is my shepherd and we begin to quote Psalms 23, we are saying something, uh, we are saying uh, these things that should conjure up within us um, this, this heart that is ready to move and to praise and to honor God. There ought to be some fulfillment of passion flowing through you. Yeah. Even as we begin to sing, my hallelujah belongs to you. Something down on the inside ought to begin to stir up on, you, on the inside of you. And you ought to be able to lift up your hands and yeah. say, glory, hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. Hey, glory to God. So it's unclear to me and to others how the year of the sheep came to acquire its bad reputation. Okay. But it has proven to be an unfair and an also outdated superstition. All right. All this attention on the zodiac calendar, you know we do it too here in America, we just want to talk about China this morning, but we be honest, some of us be talking about I'm Capricorn, I'm Pisces, I'm Aquarius, you know, uh, we have fun in this month, we do it too. But all of that superstition and relying on these zodiac calendars is a waste of time. Amen. You know, they try to predict and tell us how our life is going to be and what's going to happen from this day to the next. But let me tell you something. Life is unpredictable and the only person that can predict your life is God. Life given at any time. The Chinese parents try to navigate their children's life by determining when they would be born. But the truth, life at any moment, at any year, any time, or any place is precious. Amen. Life is a gift, and you cannot predict what's going to happen to your life. Right. Amen. Life given is a gift. 
It is a gift from God. We have been given and created in His image and in His likeness. It says that in Genesis that we were created in His image and in His likeness. So we were given this gift of being in the very image of God. Hallelujah. The truth is that people have lost their sense of what it means to have life. All right. Instead of life being a precious gift, it has become more evaluated and we evaluate it according to the quality of what you're able to do here in the earth. All right. Right? So a person who is young, who is active, who is productive, who is con they are considered to have this high quality of life and considered to be valuable and uh, useful for what you need to be done. But the moment that they turn old and they get dependent upon you and need a little assistance, may have to have a little walker or need you to come and feed them, then you think now that they no longer are worth living or even worth protecting. But even in the depths of suffering, God's image remains the same. It is an inherent good. Your life is an inherent good. Your life, no matter where you are right now, you were created in the image and in the likeness of God. Therefore, your life, whatever state, good or bad you are in, it is an inherent good. Worthy of living. Worthy of being protected. Worthy of being provided for. Worthy of dying on the cross and sparing your life. Your life is an inherent good. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that in rare instances, people unexpectedly in whatever situation that they may be in, they sometimes there's a turnaround. Mm -hmm. When you have caused, when you have sent people to the to the to the to the end, and you have declared that this person is no good, they are no longer useful. There are sometimes that God has been known to shift things in that person's life, okay. and now where you have no, where you have first saw them not being of good quality, now. On the eve of Christmas, I know you're trying to figure out where I'm going. On the eve of Christmas, one of the world's most celebrated holidays all over the country. For Christians, Christmas is a time where we remember and we celebrate the birth of Christ and how his life gives us life. In our celebrating, we often share in the tradition of gift giving. We give gifts to those that we love and that who are our family and our friends. And with great expectation and anticipation, children and adults alike await for the morning of Christmas where they can open up gifts that has been given for them. Am I right? Anybody waiting on tomorrow? Right? Anybody know, ask for something that you're waiting to get tomorrow? Come on, Come on now. Because when, you, when you're sitting and you're waiting, you know you ask for something and you're just excited about getting it and you can't wait till you open up the gift and it's almost hard trying to wait. Right, uh -huh. right. But what's most hardest, I believe, is waiting for a gift that you're not really even sure that you're going to get. Right. Like, I really hope Mama got it. I really hope my husband did it this time. I really hope my sister bought me something good because last year she didn't buy me nothing good. Come on, we, we have these different thoughts in our mind. We're wondering about what we're going to get. And it would be much easier if we really already knew what it was going to be. Well, in our text today, we find Jesus speaking to the Pharisees. It's a very popular text. It's conjunction with chapter 9. Most people don't realize that. But if you're going to get the understanding of chapter 10, you got to go to chapter 9. All right. And so Jesus is continuing a conversation that he started in chapter 9 into chapter 10, talking to the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. And he's telling, after he's healed this blind man, they're having difficulties receiving this blind man after he's been changed and transformed, right? right. You, you have some t times when you come to the Lord and you decide I'm going to do good on the, on the thing, and then you got people talking about what you doing now, and why you doing that, and why you change? You so different, right? And they want to push you to the side. And so Jesus begins to talk to the Pharisees, and he begins to announce to them his whole purpose of being there. Mm -hmm. And he says that I have come that you might have life. He begins to announce, I brought you a gift. Remember last week we talked about the gift that was under the tree for us, this child that has come that took to, as a gift for us to deliver us, to cover us, to cause 
to be on his shoulders to do things in the government for us, not to be concerned about 45 and the legislative team, the House of Representatives, our mayors and the systems and our financial systems that have us held in bondage with interest rates. Come on now. So the gift had came. And he says, now that I'm here, this is a gift we said last week is a gift that keeps on giving. So it's not this sweater that I get this year that I can't wear next year because I done grew out of it because I done ate too much. Right? It's not a Tonka Troy or a Barbie doll that I done grew up and now I don't want to play with that. I need an Xbox and a Nintendo. This is a gift that is always useful through all my entire life. And so it's a gift that keeps giving. So he says, I'm going to tell you what I've given you. So it's no longer waiting for the gift. You see, back in Isaiah chapter 6, they were waiting for the gift. We are in the New Testament now, so we are no longer waiting for the gift. He says, I have come. So he announces, here is the gift. There's no waiting, no anticipation, no waiting to see what's going to happen. I already know what's under the tree. I already know. I have come. Right? So he announces, this is the gift, the gift of life. He announces it. But before we begin to start to make our wish list, because some people take this scripture as saying, that he has come to give us everything that we want. Mm -hmm. right. right? And so we start making a wish list. And, you know, it's supposed to be prayer, but it becomes a, a prayer list, a wish list, and say, I want this, that, and the other. Lord Jesus, bless me with a house. God, bless me with a new job. And bless me with a car, Lord Jesus. And bless me so my edges grow back, Lord. Bless me so I get some new shoes, Jesus. Come on, bless my house. Give me, cause my bank account to overflow. Come on, just be real. We be praying in Jesus. So before you start doing that, the, the Christians, the believers have to get a new understanding, a new perspective of what it means to have an abundant life. Yeah. yeah. Right? We got to be transformed by the renewing of our mind and stop being conformed to the world and causing the world to make us believe that abundant uh, that abundant life is about having material things. Right. And it's not about that. So the text implies that there are two ways that we can choose to live our life. All right. We can, one, choose a life, to live, to choose to live a life pursuing the world for satisfaction and fulfillment. We we easily do that. Yeah. Without even thinking about it, we easily... Let it, Y'all, okay, can I, let me just take a little on, uh, rant come on, break. Y'all know that Google commercial? It's a, the Chromebook. Uh -huh. I hate it. It said, work it out. Work it, work it out. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Pastor, I hate that commercial. It's entrapment. Uh -huh. It's saying it don't matter that you got a light bill. Uh -huh. Don't matter that you got a car note. Because you listen to the song. Yeah. Got a light bill, right? Yeah. They took that off the church song, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's telling you, don't worry about that light bill, get this Chromebook. Yeah. And when you get that Chromebook, it ain't gonna come on because you ain't got no light because you ain't paid your light bill. Yeah. We don't think about that. We got to pay attention to what this world is trying to entrap us into. Yes. Yes. That's not the abundant life. Yeah. And we easily get so into finding fulfillment in stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Finding fulfillment in what the world said we ought to have. Yeah. Every iPad, every iPhone that come out. Now we gotta have the X. Yeah, right. Come yeah. on now. Yeah. So he implies, are you gonna you can either have life, find it here in the world, mm -hmm. finding satisfaction with things, mm -hmm. or two, you can live a life seeking after God mm -hmm. who gives long life according to the yeah. psalmist and Psalms. Yeah. He gives long life that long satisfies. Life. You got two options. Choose option one and it'll rob you. Yeah. Yeah. It'll yeah. kill you. Mm -hmm. It'll destroy your soul and you'll never have life in eternity with the Father. Mm -hmm. But if you choose option two, it'll give you life over and above yeah. which the world can offer you. Yeah. See, we look for happiness, but happiness is not the abundant life. Mm -hmm. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Abundant
Right. That we've given us an open door. Mm -hmm. That they've given us an opportunity because we're so busy complaining and going after what doesn't matter. Right. And he has to come and say, hold on. Yes. And even though he's talking to the Pharisees, that the, the believers are still there standing. Listen. Yes. And I feel like sometimes as believers we know that he has given us this abundant life, but we need to really get a good understanding of what he's saying when he said that he has given us the abundant life. Because uh -huh. we're stuck on stuff. So although we are naturally desirous, we naturally want stuff, we naturally gravitate to the nice shoes and the new hairdos and the, the new suits and the new shoes and the new ride. We want all these different things. This is just in our human nature. It's just that we have to get it back in balance. God just wants us to have nice things. He does. But at most importantly, he wants our soul to prosper even as we prosper. Amen? Amen. Okay. Thank you. So I'm, a, I'm going a different route with this text. We always talk about the good shepherd, but sometimes I think we need to remember that your life matters. Yeah. Doesn't matter where you are in your life. Don't matter what's going on. God still loves us. It's humans that will throw you to the side when you do something wrong. Amen. Your life matters. God cares and he is concerned about you. Mm -hmm. What for thou art man? My, one of my favorite scriptures in Psalms 8. That thou art mindful of me. Right? That thou carest for me. That you would send your angels and come see about me. Your life matters. Yes. It matters what you do in life. Mm -hmm. It matters how you live the life that he's given you. Amen? Amen. How you think about life makes a difference. Okay. What you think about life will determine what you do with your life. Yeah. yeah. Come on, people view their lives in different ways. For some, life is a game. For others, it's a challenge to overcome. And yet for others, it's just a riddle to solve. I've known men and I've seen women whose lives, who lives as a, 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 think that life is just a sentence to bear. Oh, this is what I've been going, what I've been given, I'm just going to traverse through. No, life is a gift that God has placed in our care. We have been trusted with this most precious gift called human life. Mm -hmm. yes. And like any gift, it can be wasted and squandered, in which I believe many of us have. Mm -hmm. Or it can be used for its purpose. Jesus was using his life for its purpose. He has come that we might have life, and he was releasing that. In the might, it is up to you to decide whether or not I will receive that life. Remember last week we talked about there's a gift, but the gift will sit there until you receive the gift. Yeah. And the Lord is just waiting with anticipation of you receiving the gift full heartedly. Come on, think about when you give your children gifts. The reason why you go out there and spend your last dollar is so that when they open that gift on Christmas morning, that your heart is filled with joy as they begin to laugh and smile and be so appreciative that mama or daddy even thought to get them what they wanted. It is the same way with God. He has come that you might have life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And have it more abundantly. Your time, your education, your wealth, your influence, your mind, your creativity, it all matters. Yes. Mm -hmm. It all is a trust. It all is a trust given over to you by God. Mm -hmm. And it matters what you do with it because God cares. Yes. Yes. He cares enough that he will send his only begotten son mm -hmm. and allow him to lay down. He said, I am the shepherd. I lay down my life and then I pick it up again. So I have life because he lives. The Bible says that he ever lived. He died, he got up, and he is making intercession for me sitting at the right hand of the Father. Yes, yes. So when it hit home to you mm -hmm. that your life is a trust from God, uh -huh. that he sent his son to die on the cross to pay the debt that we owe mm -hmm. because we sin. Yes, we did. So that we could live and have abundant life in this world, then we would have a different perspective on having stuff. Mm -hmm. The first thing that I would want is him. If I don't have him, then nothing else matters. Right? I have stuff, but from this life after that, nothing else matters. Amen? Amen. I'm moving through. Come on, I'm moving through. I know. Amen. 
Yeah. It's not a jumping shot like last week, but I'm getting you to understand that when you open your gift tomorrow, you're going to thank God for that. Amen? Because he comes first. So when he talks about, he says that I am the good shepherd. You are the sheep. He says, but you got to be careful for the thieves and the robbers. This world has been thieves and robbers to us. Yeah. Right? They have trapped us and caused us to be in bondage. That's why so many of us are in financial issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why our credit is jacked up. Uh -huh. That's why we can't afford our own houses. Right? That's why we have to rent because we don't have the money or the credit. That's why we don't have the education because we've been trapped by the world. Yeah. We've been consumed by the ways of the world. We've yeah. been consumed and entrapped by those who were set in place in high positions of government to look over its people. Mm -hmm. yeah. right, right. Thieves and robbers, they come unexpectedly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you are tired and careless and not paying attention, they sneak in mm -hmm. and overtake you. That's yeah. right. They are false teachers. They don't care. They're supposed to instruct you. They're just there for their own selfish game, their own selfish authority. They are those who have come to give you knowledge. They're to guidance and direction in a life that is apart from God. He says, those that do not enter the gate but come in different ways are not me. They are thieves and robbers of the gift. You know, we think about how crime is so heightened during this time of Christmas. And you have to be so careful. When one of our co-workers was robbed, gunpoint, with her grandchildren in Willowbrook Mall, daylight. Jesus. Just because people trying to get a gift and don't realize that they already been given one. Yeah. Yeah. We have to be careful because thieves and robbers are lurking when we're tired mm -hmm. and careless and not paying attention. That's it. That's it. But our Savior, he says, has come. <laughs> But we have been so blinded to his purposes that we have missed it. He heals the blind man in chapter 9, right? So that the blind man never knew Jesus. Mm -hmm. He never even knew what he looked like. Blind, but he could hear. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Those that could see were the ones that were really blind. Yes, yes. So we can see, but we've been blinded by the world. Mm -hmm. That we are unable to see that we have been robbed. That these have come among us. And we have missed the gift that God has delivered unto us. Amen. John Calvin says that our uncontrollable curiosity is so happy with the novel and the strange ideas of men that we rush headlong to meet thieves and robbers voluntarily. Yeah. That commercial gets us every time. Mm -hmm. I turn the TV and I flip it every time I see it. Mm -hmm. So failed expectations is what we have when it comes to God. We become very disappointed with God when he don't work it out the way that we want him to work it out. Mm -hmm. When I don't get the gift that I wanted to give, get, he, I have failed disappointments. Mm -hmm. yeah. When I don't have enough money to buy the kids the gift that I want them to have, I have now a failed disappointment in God. God didn't do it. God didn't work it out. God don't hear me. We get stressed out and we don't realize that he's already given the greatest gift that you could have ever had. So the scripture, John 10, 10, as I close, is more often than not supports the idea that Christianity leads to physical prosperity and everything good. He does not offer us an extension of physical life nor an increase of material possessions. But the possibility is what he gives us. Mm -hmm. The possibility, the certainty of a life lived yeah. higher than the life that you live here in the earth. Yeah. It's only a possibility because you have to receive it. But it's already here for you. Amen. Amen. Jesus' main purpose, as we talked last week, yes. was that salvation would be ours. Yes. That his yes. sheep, that his people would gain life here in earth because they wouldn't owe the debt of blood because Christ had already did that. But also they would have life above and beyond in the eternity. That we would have life with the Father. That we would not be condemned to hell. Amen. Amen. So the worth, the meaning of abundant life it's not about things. It's not about people, places. It's not about me getting a husband, getting a job, getting new clothes, and having all the money in the world. But it's about having life in Him. It's about receiving salvation. And I remember 
this little story of a Roman soldier who went to Caesar. Mm -hmm. And he said to him, I need permission to kill myself because my life is just not going the way that I wanted to go. He was wretched. He was disheartened. He was depressed. He was overwhelmed. And Caesar looks up at him and he says to him, man, were you ever really living anyway? My God. You got you see how you can be alive but yet still dead in your spirit because you can gain all the world. I think it was Biggie Small says the more money I have, the more problems I see. You can have all the stuff, every gift that you ever require from man here in the earth realm and still not have life. So life is unpredictable. You don't know what's gonna happen, but the only certainty is life and God. God. Do you remember growing up some, I might tell my age, that Milton Bradley game called Life? Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that game? And you would roll the dice and you would go through life and you would you know, go to school, you would go to college, get a job, get married, have a family. And all. But you never knew where you were gonna land because you had to roll the dice. Right. The dice would tell you where you would go. That's how life is. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't know what's gonna happen. You can't be like the Chinese people and plan life how you want it to be. It's unpredictable. Mm -hmm. The only person that is reliable in your life is God. And I'm going to leave you with this scripture. Deuteronomy 30 and 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life. God bless you. Amen. How many of you going to choose life this morning? If you want to have the abundant life, come on, clap them hands in this place this morning. Amen. Everyone on their feet as we begin to pray. Every head bow.